welcome back to Studio Lou. So I have decided to um, take part in a make along with Nancy over at Wishes and Weeds to make, um, actually she's only making one, but I need two because I'm actually making for myself, um, traveler's notebooks. So I haven't made specifically this style of traveler's notebook that is like the kind of standard style. And I also haven't ever really been in the practice of having specific kind of notebooks for different things like, you know, trips in my life. But um, the more I think about it, the more I just love the idea. So we have two um, trips coming up in our lives. And pardon my totally stained fingers. This is paint and this is eco dyeing from this morning. I've had a busy day. So in terms of trips, we have two family camping trips because those are kind of the safe things to do right now that are like um, all by ourselves in the middle of nowhere. So one is in June and one is in September. And um, I thought I would make a traveler's notebook for each one of those for just maybe like places that we get takeout from if we get some takeout food or things that we see and pictures that I might want to um, store and just to write about our day each day and maybe keep some like foraged plants in and just kind of like record the goings on of our life. And I think I might just start applying that to like pretty much everything that we like any trips that we take there I'd say like at least a week so anyways I will hop in um so I'll link below to Nancy at Wishes and Weeds if you don't already follow her she's a really um cool journal maker she does a lot of uh, she works with a lot of vintage materials and she's a fellow Canadian so um Anyhow, let's get started. So I'm not going to do this exactly like tutorial style um, because it's not my tutorial, it's hers. And I think if you want to follow along, it's probably best to watch her videos and follow her whole series. I think she's going to finish it all out this week. And um, each of her videos covers one or two of the pages of this whole journal. So I'm going to get started. This is my guide for the size uh, that I'm going to be making the pages. Um, this is a really really uh, fun coffee dyed paper um and it's going to be eight and a quarter by four and three eighths so eight and a quarter four and three eighths and um this is so funny and like embarrassing but you know <laughs> I am in Canada and we use the metric system so I'm not like I'm familiar with imperial I know inches and you know feet but like I just realized like how do I even measure four and three eighths? So I just watched a YouTube video. <laughs> Um, it's like this guy, um, cool terrain mister, I guess on YouTube. And it was like about how to measure the eighths of an inch. And I totally had to watch that because I'm like, I never do that. I'm not a builder. I, when would I ever deal with that? I usually deal in like, if I'm looking for specifics, I deal with centimeters and millimeters. So <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so the first part of this, um, for the first page, we're actually doing the center page of the journal. So I'm going to need two because I'm making two journals. Um, so it's pages 27, 28, 29, and 30. Like this is 27, 28, 29, and 30. And so um, she recommended using some kind of a graphical picture and she used an Edith Holden book. So that's actually what I'm going to do because I hoard my Edith Holden. <laughs> and I thought, you know, instead of hoarding it, I've, I think I've torn one page out of this book. I'm just, I'm impossible. So instead of hold, hoarding it, let's find a couple pictures that I can use in my own journal and then I won't feel so hoardy about it. Um, I actually have like three copies of this book and I'm just being silly this book if you're wondering is like a really really popular book in the journal world um it's like collected for making journals out of so what I want to do is I think use a page that has something on each side like I don't want the text I want something on each side and I really love these sparrows um I think that or swallows rather I think that is a high likelihood so um that is april and i did think about using maybe like the months that we'd be going away but then i thought ah, that i'll be restricted to exactly like you know not using what i like visually but like using something from that month so no not gonna bother so there's this one that's also double-sided um let's 
see. I was trying to find what I really, really love. That's nice. I love foxglove. Is it double-sided? No, it's got text on one side. Although I love the text as well. I just want an image for this though. Um, let's keep going here. Oh my gosh, I have to scrub my fingers. I did a bunch of plant dyeing. We went on, uh, oh, thistle. Thistle and bees. That's my favorite. Okay, so thistles and bees are my favorite. Oh, and it is double-sided. Okay, so this one's a definite, absolutely yes happening. Now I just want to be very careful here. I'm going to um, get my, my knife to cut this with, I think. Actually, I could probably take out this signature. Um, but anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I was plant dyeing this morning um, with flowers that I found in the compost at our local graveyard. Actually, I can probably just tear this out. Yeah, I can tear it out. Sorry, I just have to concentrate here. So now it's down to, are we using this one too? Or are we finding another one? So yeah, I, um, I took a bunch of plants and I sandwiched them and made a boiled book with watercolor paper and um oh mushrooms would be good too but that's only one-sided um a boiled book okay that would be really perfect because i go mushroom hunting in september oh geez <laughs> oh hold on what was this one Oh, that's nice with the chestnuts too. And it is September. I think I want the mushrooms though. Yeah, we're gonna do mushrooms. Okay, so anyways. Yeah, so I was doing plant dyeing and um, I used a bunch of rusty, like rusty bits and um, like rusty cogs and so I have that um currently upstairs in the oven oh no this way right hold on so I just had to take a minute to remember that we're folding this way <laughs> of course we are ah, I need to wake up okay let me grab my bone folder so I can just make some neat folds here I actually think I want that to be the middle, the inside. So we're just going to flip it. Okay, so that's that. Now, the other thing that she did with this one, um, so this is page 27. So we'll stick that there. And this is 28 and 29 in the middle. And then this is 30 behind. Okay, so next is an eyelet with a string kind of little tab at the top. Now, um, what she did was she added two eyelets, which I really like the look of. And I think she used like a little piece of twine to tie a bow. I'm going to use some of my hand spun yarn that's hanging around here. So um, just like a little tab kind of like this. I'm going to use that coffee dyed paper that... Um, it's hanging about over here that I used as the template. And I have two of these. I got to remember, I have to do the same thing twice here. So <laughs> let's just do the same thing twice. Okay. Okay. So we have those two. Um, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to double sticky. I'm just going to put the stickies on this one and use it as my guide. Um, I'm actually going to use the same um, paper on both of these because I really love this coffee dyed paper. Okay. Then the eyelet string goes on page 29. So that's over here. So I think I'll probably put that kind of like that um, and then glue stick. And 
Let's move my water and move Edith out of the way here. Okay. I'll get my glue book. Okay. And then here. I want to leave it like a bit of a tab. So you want to leave a little space up above. Here we go. And then we repeat the same thing again. Doing this is just making me excited to go away. Okay, there we go. Now, where are my little, I was like, I shouldn't put my um, eyelets on this table because I'm going to completely lose them. And here they are. Okay. I'm also can't remember these little tiny eyelets if I can use my chomper for them. <clears throat> I don't remember if I've, if I've used it before for these. Let me see the size of hole. Um, let me try this first on a piece of scrap paper so I don't end up making any destructive decisions. <laughs> so, with this pokes that size hole, let's just make sure before we do anything drastic. I think it'll be fine. These are my tiny, tiny eyelets. Um, there we go. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, just making sure. No sense destroying things this early in the day. I'll leave all my destruction for later on. <laughs> so we just want to punch two holes um, here. Relatively in the center, but I'm not like measuring everything again. This is a journal for me. One. And... Two. Okay, then I'll do the same over here. Unless, do I want to do just maybe a single? No, I like having two. Two little eyelets is nice. Let's make sure we're still in the right spot here. The other thing I don't like about this chomper is it makes it very kind of difficult to see where you're putting a hole. <laughs> that is my challenge. And I'm going to need two more of those eyelets. Let me just grab them from over here in my, my bin. One. And. Oops. Two. Okay. Now we will go to the eyelet setting on this thing. And start with trying to put these in. I know some people really struggle with these particular, <clears throat> this particular crocodile, trying to get their eyelet setting, but um, I have been okay so far with it. Okay. Sorry, this is a little fidgety, I know. center here. Hold tight. There we go. Hmm. Okay, we have to try again. That one went wonky. I'm not sure if... I don't know if I've used this for these little guys before. Also, this is a little bit wet. The glue is still a little wet. Let's just try once more here. And if I notice this is weird, I might have to change my my plan and use my other eyelet setter. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna pause you for one second. Okay, so I'm just gonna set um, that aside. Now, um, we need to put pieces of string through these. 
So I have for this one a bit of this scrap hand spun yarn that I want to use. Um, it's a thick and thin kind of yarn. So I just want to cut it down to like one of the, the thin spots. Um, and then I need to thread it on a needle because I don't like to um, have to go like trying to push yarn through this little hole. There we go, that's okay. And maybe we'll go to about here. That should be long enough for what I'm doing. So we're gonna go in this hole and back through here. And then we'll just tie a knot. I'll see if a bow works. If a bow works, sorry putting a needle in my mouth, which I shouldn't be doing. You know, your dentist doesn't like when you do stuff like that. So you shouldn't mess with your dentist. Um, I don't know. I think I kind of just want to like maybe do a double knot with this because it's not like something I want really to have a... I think it'd be kind of fun just hanging because it's yarn and it's cool. So yeah, I like that like that with the thistles. Now I need to get um, something for this one. Hold on one second. Okay, I found another yarn. Um, it's just kind of a scrappy bit, but it's the right colors for this. And it's got some fun like threads and stuff that are attached to it. So let's use that one. Um, there we go. There we go. Okay, so that is pretty much, I think, all we have to do with these pages. This is it for this center piece, except um, I do want to ink around the edges just to kind of give a little nice aging to the page. Um, so this one I think I'll ink in my standard kind of brown, um, or not my standard, but the standard kind of vintage photo. Just to kind of age the page a little bit. I'll do both sides. that one. Now I'm going to do something different with the other one. I'm going to try to sort of offset back and forth doing a slightly different thing with both of these. Um, this one I think it lends itself to some nice bright green. Okay, so that's number one and number two. So those are done and those are um, page 27, 28, 29, and 30. So they're the center of your journal. So I will just take my notes that I made about it and just pop them right there. 
I think that this is a really fun way of following along with um, with Nancy while she's crafting. It's really nice, but because I wanted to make a video of like my process to, or just what I'm doing, um, I can't listen to her at the same time. <laughs> so I had to make some notes. Okay, so the next is 25, 26. Um, 31 and 32. So this should be double-sided cardstock. So give me one second. I'm going to grab my supplies. Okay, so we're moving right along to pages 25, 26, 31, 32. So I'm going to stick this here so I know this is this one so um what she recommended for this page is double-sided cardstock like scrapbook paper I don't have that but I do have um beautiful botanical vintage book pages um so that's what I used and then I backed it um with other paper so this one I used my coffee dyed lace paper and oily paper and this one is dotted cabbage dyed paper so um just stick that there so we know it's page 25. So we've got both of them here. Now for page 26, um, it calls for a lace side load pocket. So I have two different pieces of lace. This one I want to use for this one, like that. And then I have this large purple one to go with the thistle, sort of, or this flower here. Um, and up here, I thought it would be good. So that's what I'm going to do for these. So now I just need to trim these down to the right size. Um, so right there. Okay. So I think I'm actually going to stitch this on um, rather than glue I'm going to stitch it on so let's focus on this one um, and this is a big wide piece of lace so I need to decide what I want to use here so let's just look at it for a minute and see what side is better um, I like this side I think because the leaf is there so now I've just got to cut it to the size that I want the pocket to be. Oy, this stuff sticks to my fingernails. Okay. Let's so just kind of line this up roughly. It doesn't have to be like perfect or anything. Um, so then I think I will go to about, whoops. Yeah, the stuff just really sticks. <laughs> it catches. Um, probably here is good. Kind of maybe halfway, not quite. Oh, these scissors. These are not fabric scissors. I never keep fabric scissors on my desk here, though, because I don't want to cut paper with fabric scissors. It's just not a good thing. This is a particularly difficult lace to cut for some reason. <laughs> okay. Probably because it's not cotton. It's like um, a silk rayon, I think. Okay, now let's just check how long we want this to be. It's kind of kind of cool with like some little scrappy bits hanging off the end. If we did it a little longer, that might be neat. Let's just do that. And we'll kind of cut it a little rough because there we go. It'll be easier and it will be cool. All right, let's get the excess lace out of the way. I'm gonna pause for two seconds and I'm gonna stitch these on. I'll be right back. Okay, so the pockets are in both of these. I'm happy with them. Um, so that is the lace side pocket, lace side load pocket. Now on to pages 31, 32. So on 31, um, she recommends using um, some vintage ephemera and just um, clipping it on. So she uses two pieces. So I grabbed a couple of pieces um, of vintage ephemera. So first she uses a card and I have to check, this is a little too wide. Um, so I think I might just snip it down to a reasonable size here. So let's just, um, where's my, Actually, use my paper trimmer. Hold on. Okay, let's just. Try 
trim some off of this. There's probably good. So this is just like a card about kindness with a butterfly on it. Um, I probably will go over some of it like with some um, paper, some vintage paper and like cover it up. And then um, I'm going to use, this is actual, this is another vintage postcard ephemera and it's like a tin type picture of this cute little family. So it's pretty nice. And so those will go together. Then we need um, a paper clip, two paper clips. So then you just clip that on here. Oops, like that. And then that is done. So that one's finished. So um, I'm just going to stick this on here because we know that's page 31. It's vintage ephemera. That's done. And then I will stick this here with this. I think I forgot to trim these down to the same um, length as the, where's the prototype? Hold on. Yeah, I totally did. Yeah, we have to trim these. Hold on not a big deal not a big deal yeah um i was so focused on the other things that i had to do hee <laughs> hee so hold on let's just go back for one second retrace our steps um just line this up here do 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 then where is my ruler 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 there it is going to use a tearing ruler and trim those down a little bit here so that they line up with the prototype. There we go. Okay. One. Um, then we have to just re-ink the bottom. And pretend that nothing happened. We're all good. <laughs> okay. That's that. Now... We have to decide which one we want to put with this. I think I'll put this one with this one. Plunk this right inside of here. Okay. Just like that. And then set those aside along with the prototype. We'll set it aside too. The prototype page. Then this one. With the purple pocket, I found this vintage Happy Valentine's Day card. Um, let's open it up. I don't see where the flap is for it. Because I may have to trim it down as well. We'll see. envelope because so that might come in handy a little later who knows set it over here okay happy valentine's day and it's a cute like crossed cross stitching uh, or embroidery card and it's got um a little happy valentine's day message inside and then the other piece of vintage ephemera is this old um photo of this woman in this marvelous hat isn't she amazing and it's um what does it say here? It's very hard to... Arthur, Ontario. Hattie, Arthur, Ontario. And this is Francis Clements on the back. So that's what we're going to use in this one. I just got to check it out. I do have to trim this card down a little bit. Just a tiny bit. So we'll grab this again. 
and just do like a little, kind of like a half inch off the edge, I think. A little more. There we go. Out of the way um, and then I will put this here and we need another paper clip did I already grab a second paper clip I thought I did yeah right here there we go that will go inside here. I feel a strong purple theme with this one, a purple and green kind of theme. Okay, so that's those two done. Um, now I'm going to probably wrap this video up. And um, so we've done two, um, two pages. So I will probably finish the rest in the next video. Thank you so much for joining me. Once again, I will link to um, Wishes and Weeds, Nancy down below. She's the one who is hosting this make along of a traveler's journal. Um, I'm making two of them and I will talk to you all soon. So check the link below for all my social media information. Don't forget to subscribe and check out Nancy's channel as well, Wishes and Weeds. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Bye.